looks like some people are starting to join. Thank you so much for uh, coming to today's Winter Back to Workday Station Organizer Call. We will go ahead and get started in about five minutes once we've got a few more people on the line. Thank you for joining, um, Rosie and Brittany. I'm just going to get started in about five minutes, four minutes, once we have a couple people show up. It's good to see you. How have you been? It's wonderful to see you, too. Excellent. Ha Great start to the new year. Yes, absolutely. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. Excellent. So I'll kick things off with a couple of housekeeping notes. But like I said, let's just wait for a few more people to join. And hopefully everyone's um, planning and coordination is going well. If not, definitely raise any concerns you have on today's call and we'll be happy to answer questions if we can. Great to see a lot of familiar folks on the call. Um, we'll go ahead and get started in a couple minutes here. All right, everybody, I think we can go ahead and get started, um, especially since I'm planning on uploading the recording to this meeting um, to Dropbox and the drcog.org website. Um, anybody who joins late will be able to catch up fairly easily, but we do have quite a bit to cover, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, first, I just want to say thank you all for joining today's call. If any of you are having audio issues or um, challenges seeing the screen share, you should be seeing the start of my presentation. Please leave a chat or just unmute yourself and, and let us know um, what's going on, and we'll do our best to troubleshoot. Otherwise, barring any sort of technical issues, let's definitely get started on today's call. So um, first of all, thank you so much for your support of Winter Bike to Work Day. This is a really exciting event for us. It's our first big event of the year. So as Rosie and I were saying at the beginning of this call, a really nice way and opportunity for us to kick off the new year and bring attention to the services um, that we provide here on the Way to Go team. So today I'm going to be talking, as you've probably gathered, about Winter Bike to Work Day, and this is an annual Denver Region event that's hosted by my team, way to go We are a program of the Denver Regional Council of Governments, also known as Dr. Cog, and our goal is to reduce traffic congestion by helping employers and commuters in the region find more eco-friendly ways of getting around. And we do this in a variety of ways, like outreach, um, we do a lot of serving, but some of... Um, our events are also like Bike to Work Day, Winter Bike to Work Day are also a great opportunity for us to engage commuters and employers and talk about air quality in Denver. Our goal is to reduce traffic congestion by helping employers and commuters find those alternative transportation options. And ultimately, this does help air quality in the region. Um, a couple of notes before we get started, um, just be aware that I'll be recording this virtual meeting and posting the recorded session to the drcog.org website, um, as well as the Dropbox link. Um, and I will try to do that before I sign off this, uh, this afternoon. 
I also want to let everybody know um, that live captions for today's call will be available. If you look at your Zoom toolbar, you should see a little button that says more. It's got three dots on it. Um, you can go ahead and click that and select the captions option, and that will live caption um, today's meeting. I don't know how accurate the captions will be, but if you have any sort of um, hearing impairment, I think the closed captions will be pretty helpful. So just wanted to let everybody know. And then lastly, um, just a little logistics note related to questions. Um, we're hoping that if any of you have questions, you can hold those until the end. Uh, we've got plans to take questions at the end of today's call. And so we're we're happy to do that. Um, we'll do our best to address those after the call. But if you have any questions, do feel free to drop those into chat. I've got a couple of teammates monitoring. If they can't answer your question in chat, they'll do so. Otherwise, as I said, we'll read those aloud at the end of the call. And if you'd like to just unmute yourself, ask a question um, at the end of the presentation, that's fine too. I'm also going to ask everybody to please mute themselves so we don't have any background noise. Um, I can automatically mute people, but it is a bit difficult to do it while I'm presenting. So we'll just ask you all to uh, to keep your keep your eye on uh, whether or not you're muted. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So couple of things that we'll cover in today's presentation. Um, I wanted to just, you know, talk a little bit about what Winter Bike to Work Day is. Um, it's a, as I mentioned, an annual event. Um, we have lots of dedicated commuters in the region, region who choose to ride their bikes instead of driving their cars. Um, and Winter Bike to Work Day is a great opportunity to recognize them and say thank you to them, both for us as well as you. So on today's call, we'll look at the poster design. Um, you can actually see an adaptation of that on in this slide and in the cover slide of today's uh, deck. We'll also talk about what prizes we're offering riders who pledge on the bike to workday.co website. And we'll talk about how each of you can ensure a good turnout by promoting the event. And the last thing we'll cover is what it means to be a station organizer and host a winter bike to work day station. So quite a few topics for us to cover. And as I mentioned, um, there should be plenty of time for questions at the end. So let's talk about what Winter Bike to Work Day is. As I mentioned when I started this call, I see a lot of familiar uh, names here in the participant list. Many of you have probably already participated in a Bike to Work Day or Winter Bike to Work Day as a stakeholder or station organizer. So we won't have to go into too much detail, um, but some of you may be new here, so I will just give as much context as I think will be valuable here. Um, Winter Bike to Work Day, as I mentioned, is an annual event, and we help hold it the second Friday of every February. And what I would like to emphasize about the event is that there are lots of reasons why commuters might like to participate in it from a desire to protect our region's air quality by reducing the number of cars on the road, to also earning the opportunity to win prizes by pledging to ride on the biketoworkday.co website. So again, lots of enticements for people to register. Um, but riders and the way to go team are not the only people who are responsible for or capable of making this event a success. And it's really stakeholders, station organizers like yourselves, um, whether you choose to help us market the program or host a station on the day of the event, you're the real reason this event becomes a success. So I wanted to talk about some best practices that you can implement into your planning. There are lots of organizations, including employers, um, economic development councils, neighborhood associations, who choose to host appreciation stations or booths where riders can stop by on the day of the event. Um, they typically offer beverages like coffee or water. Um, sometimes they'll give away snacks or um, coupon and discount codes. But really, it's a great way for you um, as stakeholders in the region to talk about your business, talk about your priorities with people who stop by your booth. Um, if you cannot host a station due to staffing issues um, or any other issues, that's totally fine. We still appreciate your support um, getting the word out and uh, helping the community see the bike to workday.co registration link so that they can sign up and then, like I said, earn the chance to win some cool prizes. 
So here is this year's poster design, um, probably fairly familiar to all of you. If you've been to the bike to workday.co website, you've seen this, um, this design here. I wanted to talk a little bit about the process of the of the design um, work that we do here. So every year, Dr. Cog, um, our internal design team works with way to go to come up with the poster graphic that represents the region's geographic diversity um, that also entices commuters to choose more eco-friendly transportation options like the ones we see depicted here um, with the bike, the fox, the rabbit, and the bird. Um, they're doing a great job not being solo drivers in a vehicle. So we like to we like to depict them here. Um, we have adapted this poster design into several different types of assets, including this presentation deck, um, and I will make this available online as well in the digital toolkit once this meeting is over. Um, at today's call, we'll review some of the other materials in the toolkit, including social media and web graphics. Um, we'll show you where we've saved some marketing language that you can incorporate into your newsletters and email outreach. Um, we've also got some station organizer materials and a design file of this poster graphic. If you have Adobe Illustrator or a similar program, you will be able to extract elements from it and come up with your own designs. We always encourage you to do that if you choose to. So wanted to just share some very important dates here, just three of them um, that, that you'll have to keep in mind. But the most important date is obviously the event date, Friday, February 9th. That is the day that Winter Bike to Work Day takes place. Um, typically, station organizers make plans to greet commuters in the morning from about 6 a.m. until 10 a.m., but a lot of organizers, especially restaurants, bars, rest, uh, community associations, they might choose to hold um, evening celebrations and celebrate those people as they're leaving the office for their uh, commute home. And if you choose to host a station, and by the way, we'll talk more about what that entails in a couple minutes, you're going to want to register it on the biketoworkday.co website before Wednesday February 7th. Um, there are a couple of reasons that we're asking you to complete your station registration two days before the event. One is so that we can include it in our communications and let people know um, to take a look at the map and, and be aware that all of the stations they see listed are current. It's, it's the best list that they can look at. Um, it gives riders enough time to sort of plan out their route on the day of the event and maybe stop by your station. And it also gives you as the station organizer plenty of time to socialize among your followers, whether they're visit visitors to your store or email recipients that they can find you on February 9th and exactly where and what you'll be offering. I'm also gonna ask for everybody's help here um, driving pledges for riders. So our goal this year is 5,000 online pledges. We are a little bit above a thousand as of today with a month to go before the event. Um, riders will be allowed to sign up to participate in the event so they can register on biketoworkday.co through the end of the day on Winter Bike to Work Day, Friday, February 9th. Um, and at that point at, you know, midnight Saturday, we will close registration and we will use that list of people who registered before midnight to pull prizes. Um, it's important for our prize drawing process that everybody register at the end of the day, February um, 9th on Friday. So we're definitely asking for your help getting this link out there. All right. Well, I am going to pass things over uh, to Brittany right now to talk a little bit about the prizes that we're making available to participants. Um, so Brittany, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so we have a, quite a few really cool prizes we're giving away um, for winter this year. Our grand prize is a pair of the Shox Open Red Head Run headphones. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware about kind of what these are, but the nice thing is that it doesn't block sound from the environment. So you're able to kind of maybe listen to music or other things without your ears being um, otherwise occupied uh, from hearing traffic or other things. So um, there are quite a few things we have on the list. Most of them are weekly registration besides um, the grand prize. So um, if people are pledging to ride on a certain week, they're eligible to win some of these prizes. And we have all of this in our prize list with the um, station organizer kit. So we have some cleaning supplies for your bike that are really good for cleaning and degreasing. Um, these really fun um, lights to go on your wheels, a pair of bar mitts for when it's really cold. 
we have, you know, some fenders, some bike lights that are really nice and bright. Um, and yeah, a couple more prizes, like some really nice winter socks. Um, yeah, so feel free to look at the the prize list to check out the prizes and maybe strategize which week you um, register to ride based on what prize you're interested in winning. Thanks, Brittany. Um, and just for everybody's reference, and I just dropped um, a link in chat. If you click on that, it should show you the full prize list. So all of these wonderful items that Brittany just talked about, what weeks they'll be available, and what the eligibility criteria is to win that prize. So definitely take a look. And as I mentioned, as you're communicating with your um, customers, your followers, let them know that part of participating in the event means you're automatically entered into drawings to win these prizes. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah, we got a relevant question from Tom in the chat about the prizes. Um, so registering is just to pledge to ride, like you just pledge to ride on the event anywhere that you are wanting to ride to stations or other places. Um, the week that you choose to register on the website is the week the data that or the date that we look at to choose like what prizes people get so um, like you're pledging to ride for the event but depending on the date that your pledge is submitted will determine which prize you're eligible to win if that makes sense if I'm explaining that well. <laughs> I will just add, so um, Tom, we launched registration in December and we kind of took a chunk of seven days after registration launch and we said, this is the week one prize. And we did that all the way up until the event. So again, what Brittany was saying, if you click on that link that I dropped into chat, you'll see what the week one, week two, week three, et cetera, prizes are. And if you decide that one of those prizes looks great to you. It's the thing that you want to, you know, enter to win. You would register in that week and you would be eligible to win that prize. Um, hopefully that that answers the question. Perfect. And then Siobhan had a comment here. Um, would you like to add a private tour at Avery Brewery? That would be so cool. I think that would really entice writers to come in. Um, and I think too, Siobhan, if you're um, communicating to people that you're offering this, make sure that you also mention where they can park their bikes and secure them before they go into the brewery for the tour. But I could see that being a really popular draw. And I just love that we are um, being creative with Winter Bike to Work Day. So yeah, very cool. Feel free to reach out if you want to chat any more or brainstorm some ideas. I was actually wondering if you wanted to add like a gift certificate for a private tour um, as one of the prizes, not necessarily um, an open tour for the people who come in. That's a little hard for us to do because we Got don't it. have an idea of how many people might be there um, for the tour. And that's something that we, we need. It's not just like kind of a walk-in thing. Um, so if you wanted to add that to the list, we could participate in a, in addition to that, I'm going to have my, my staff signing up a lot of them already ride to work. Um, and in addition to that, we have, uh, bike locks on both sides of our property. So tons of access for that. That's awesome. I really love this idea. Um, let's connect offline and we would be happy to roll that into our prize list. That sounds very fun. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So now that we've talked a little bit about prizes, I promised we would talk about what it means to host a station. And Blair um, on my team is going to talk a little bit about, you know, what that day of experience looks like and what you should all keep in mind. Thanks, Nisha. Yeah. So um, to talk a little bit more and expand on what Nisha was saying about hosting a station and how that can be beneficial to your organization. Um, this is a great way to um, show your support for cyclists in the region and and start to build a positive reputation with that community. Um, and also to show uh, support for clean air in Denver region at large. Um, we kind of have an air quality problem here. So, um, and I think the Denver community is kind of known for having a very eco-friendly, eco-conscious um, attitude. And so it's a good way to show that you're committed to better air in the region as well. Um, and it's also a great way to just increase visibility for your brand um, as a whole. Um, 
And so the best way to sort of maximize that is to have a really attractive and fun station. Um, and so for those of you who have uh, signed up already, you may have noticed that we've slightly changed um, our station descriptions for this year's event. Um, so the four types of stations we have are uh, coffee stations, which is where you would provide hot drinks, coffee, cocoa, tea, um, as well as maybe like a protein bar, or a small snack for riders on their way to work. Um, we've got breakfast stations. Um, burritos are really popular if you're able to swing that. Bagels, breakfast sandwiches, things like that. Um, water stations are a good spot for riders to stop and refuel if they've got a longer ride, especially. Um, and again, a good, a good spot to have those protein bars and, and smaller snacks like that. And then we've got evening party stations, um, which is a good place for people to stop by and have a drink. Um, hang out on their commute home, especially because it's on a Friday. So I think people have a little bit more time and energy to stop and have a quick drink on the way home. Um, and then another thing for anything, any of these types of, of stations, breakfast pizza, uh, just to <laughs> uh, mention Peter's comment there is a great uh, attraction too. Um, but the one thing that you can do at any of these stations is provide a little bit of um, swag items, a um, little bit of merchandise. We, at our station, we provide people with bike pins that are really popular, neck gaiters, other things that help people who are cyclists. Um, typically at the winter event, we get a very, uh, very avid cycling crowd. So those bike specific uh, items are very popular. Um, one thing to note is that we don't allow people to sell things at their station, but it's a great place to hand out that branded swag that kind of spreads your, your brand a little bit more. Um, and another important note is that when you, if you haven't or, or registered your station already, or if you have, you can go back in and edit it. But it's important to make sure that your description on that station map um, makes your station as attractive as possible to riders. So talk about those things that you are planning on providing to riders so that they can can look as they're planning out their route to work and say, I'm going to go get some breakfast pizza because that sounds delicious. Um, I think that covers it on station pro tip. Bring a portable Bluetooth speaker, um, as Rosie says, to play upbeat music. Uh, great, great suggestion, um, especially, you know, in the morning, people are a little groggy and having a little music can can, can definitely be a good way to, to keep the energy high. Okay, and then now I think I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how you can promote um, registration, associate yourself with Bike to Work Day using some of the materials we've got. If Nisha, okay, and I'll drop the um, link to the Dropbox folder here in the chat. And I'll also share my screen to just, okay. Um, Nisha, it's not gonna let me share my screen while you're sharing, so. Oh, here we go. And here. Blair, while you're doing that, um, I just wanted to mention to those of you who might have limited budget for food on Winter Bike to Work Day, um, do feel free to prioritize shelf stable items, um, granola bars, other sorts of snacks that you could potentially take back to the office and donate to colleagues or even reuse at another tabling event. All okay, right. And, and then, ahead, yeah. yeah, so uh, another way to, to really maximize um, your participation is to help promote um, winter bike to work day for riders. And um, we try to make that as easy as possible pro by providing a bunch of um, materials for station organizers that Nisha mentioned earlier, but I'll walk through them just a little bit here. So um, the first thing we've got here in the station organizer uh, toolkit is those official rules and prizes in there. You'll find a uh, list of the prizes that Brittany was talking about. Um, you'll actually find the list of which ones will be um, handed out by the registration week in there, um, along with the rules. Um, I suppose we're just missing the Avery Brewery Tour in this doc, uh, but we'll connect offline and add that to the doc as soon as possible. Um, we've also got um, some Winter Bike to Work Day marketing copy. Um, and so in here, you'll see that um, you can... Um, use this to um, send emails, add it to any of the, your businesses or organizations' newsletters around the events. Um, and then we've got also a bunch of um, sample social media posts so that you don't have to, to come up with them on your own. Um, and some recommendations for how to post them to maximize their reach. As you can see here, um, we've got four sample, um, sample posts for you guys to choose from. 
Um, and then from there, as Nisha mentioned, we've also got um, an e-signature graphic, which you can use to add to your own email um, e-signature at the end. Um, if you've ever emailed with any of us, you'll have seen um, that graphic at the bottom of our emails. Um, we've got some social media images that you can use. Um, these are just going to be images with that Bike to Work Day logo on it. Um, from last year's Bike to Work Day event, you'll see, um, for example, we've got um, folks at a station. These are just a nice little way to kind of add a little a color to those social media posts. Um, you'll see when you get in there that we've got quite a few for you to choose from. Um, and then from there, we've got also those poster files that Nisha was mentioning. Um, QR code graphics, posters, and hero graphics that you can add to your website. So um, as Nisha said, feel free to add uh, your own branding to those in order to make them a little bit uh, more personal to your your organization. Um, but you know as you're as you're working to help promote um, winter bike to work day, um, these are kind of mutually beneficial in that it promotes the event but also um, adds your brand to um, the winter bike to work day brand. Um, and I think that's all I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Blair. Very helpful information. And I think, um, you know, too, if any of you run into any issues at all with, um, you know, accessing these materials, let us know. I think also it's not very difficult for us if you find that you need a certain graphic rendered in a different size or you wanted us to make any modifications um, just feel free to reach out to the btwd at drcog.org inbox and we will do our best to help you perfect well Brittany blair really appreciate that information um and i think we are kind of at the end of this presentation so as i mentioned we did want to take some time um questions. Now, I did take some notes. Um, give me a second to take some notes on some of the questions I saw in chat. So the first one I'm going to respond to is Dave Sabatos's question about doing a giveaway. Um, Dave, let's connect offline. It would be great if um, we could incorporate that into our prizing. Um, another option would be for you at your rack station to do some sort of a giveaway. Um, and I'm not sure if you mentioned to me, you're not going to be able to host a station this year. We can definitely brainstorm. But a couple of options for us, we can run it through our official pricing um, and registration challenge. You could do sort of a rack focused winter bike to work day um, giveaway, or we can add it to our prize list for the summer. So let's just get together offline and figure out what works best. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, seeing this question a couple of times here, so I just want to uh, reiterate what um, my colleagues have put into chat, and thank you for, for doing that. There is no cost associated with participating in this event. The only hard costs are things like, you know, water bottles or coffee, whatever you decide to donate to the riders who stop by your station. But registering is totally free. Um, in fact, I will just give a plug, all of the services that way to go provides are, are totally free, including employer outreach and consultation. So um, just know that we are here to, to help. We're sort of, um, we're, we're not gonna take your money. Um, let's see. Um, Katie, I'm actually going to have Charmaine respond to your question about the preferred hashtags. Um, Charmaine, would you mind dropping in some of the event hashtags into chat so people can grab those? Sure. I was actually just in the middle of responding. <laughs> Excellent. That sounds great. And then Marissa, I also see your question here. Yes, absolutely. So in our uh, campaign monitor email list, we have a segment of past and current Bike to Work Day station organizers. So if you signed up for last year's winter event or last year's um, June event, you'll automatically be receiving these emails. And as you opt in as a station organizer for this year, we also roll you into that list as well. So all of our station organizers will be receiving um, um, official communications from us.
Um, let's see. Okay, so Colleen's got a question here. Um, so yeah, breakfast station typically from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. So think about what that commute to the office looks like for, for most people. I think early morning makes sense. Um, recommended ride home time is, you know, really subject to um, different work cultures, people's work preferences. Again, remember that this event takes place on a Friday. Typically, people are headed out of the office a little bit early. So if you wanted to maybe start your um, party event or your afternoon event around 2.30 or 3, you should capture those early birds, um, keep it going until past 5, and then all of those 8 to 5, 9 to 5 commuters will also be able to stop by. Um, and if there's anyone on the call who has hosted a party station or evening station in the past, um, please feel free to, to speak up and let us know what times worked best for you, any lessons learned. Um, and Brittany and Blair, did I miss any questions from chat? I think we caught them all it looks like so far but if anyone has any other questions yeah feel free to put them in chat or, or email us yep you can even I unmute see yourself. there's a question oh i see there's a question for a recommended ride home time if the recommended breakfast time is six to ten yeah so um just address that one and i said maybe 2 30 um you start your your event and then definitely keep it going past five o'clock so that you can get those eight to five commuters um let's see yeah and tom that's a really great point if you can't do six to ten you can do you know six to eight you can do eight to ten by all means, do it. Just make sure that in that description and in the station registration, you're really clear about when people can find you. Um, let's see. So Bicycle Colorado, this is a great question. Um, we actually do not at the moment have the ability on the website to sort of peer you with other station organizers. However, that's something that we can do, um, you know, offline. So if you want to reach out to us, just shoot us an email to the BTWD at drcog.org inbox. What we can do is um, help connect you with other organizers who are hosting parties. There's also a way on the Bike to Work Day website. So let me just, um, let me pull this up really quickly so that I can show you how to filter on the Bike to Work Day Find a Map website, but you will be able to filter out those party stations. So just um, give me one second while this loads. Okay. So at the moment, it looks like we don't have any party stations. Um, so this is the bike to work day.co map. And you can see we've got a bunch of um, breakfast stations and water stations. The party stations will be indicated in purple. If I zoom out, I wonder if we have any in the region. I don't see any. So a um, couple of ways to look at this. You can just eyeball it, look for the purple party pin or you can go up here. I'll just type in breakfast since obviously um, the party, there are no party stations listed here, but you should just be able to type in party and it will filter out all of those party stations into a list for you, uh, but definitely get in touch. And if we get any other um, requests from people who are looking to partner for an afternoon station, we would be happy to share them, uh, share their information with you. Excellent. Looks like a couple of questions got added and answered. Oh, one, Elaine, that's good to know. Oh, go ahead, Brittany. One that I think will come up that Tom raised that's a really good question is what if you can't do the standard six to 10? And I think it's fine as long as you're there the, the time that you said that you will. So some writers will notice when people pack up a little early. So if, you know, if you're able to keep it reflecting whatever time that you're able to um, be at your station, that's totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. We want to make it as easy for you to participate as possible. Um, so Elaine makes a great note, um, probably because it was a Friday, they opened up a winter station party event at four and people started arriving a little bit earlier. So yeah, I would say 2.30 or three is probably a good time to kick that off. 
And then let's see what the Tap House has to say. Oh, I absolutely love this idea. So inviting people to stop by in the morning, pick up a coupon, and then invite them back to use it in the afternoon. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, those of you with shops, restaurants, bars, this might be a good opportunity for you, especially if your venue isn't open early in the morning. Um, this way you can get some, um, get some repeat business. So I, I really like that suggestion. Um, great, Sue. So feel free to add your party station here on the bike to work day.co map. Um, Brittany did drop into chat the organizer link. We're also happy to help you offline. But that's exciting. I'm glad you're planning to host a big party in Boulder. Um, let's see. So Colleen is asking, is there something to hosting a station that's not in front of your business? Absolutely. Um, I think it's a good idea to really look at look at your community. Um, your business may not be located in the best place for Bike to Work Day station. The one thing to keep in mind is if you do decide to set up your station in a park or a public place, there may be some permitting um, requirements. So I would say um, for sure for Boulder Bike Path, get in touch with the city and county of Boulder. And Colleen, if you need our help or need us to connect you, we're happy to, to uh, dig around and find the right point of contact for you. But chances are they will allow you to set up your booth on Bike to Work Day. Got it. Yeah, I think sometimes, um, so Colleen just mentioned, it's in a, their business is in a great spot, but there are quite a few other stops as well. Yeah, just think about where you're going to get the most, um, I guess, ROI in terms of the effort you're putting in and all of the visits that you want and just be strategic about where you set up. Make sure you, you know, cross all the T's and dot all the I's when it comes to the permitting process. That's awesome. Thanks, Caitlin, for letting us know. Awesome. And then Katie from Infinitus Pizza um, is offering to connect with and partner with anyone over in Broomfield. So Katie, what I will do is get you in touch with Commuting Solutions. They're our TMA partner over in Broomfield. And um, I think they would be happy to have some partnership and they can also connect you to other station organizers who might need um, some support. Yeah, and Elaine, this is a really good point. So um, Colleen, Elaine is just um, mentioning what the Boulder Chamber does and having sort of a series of stations along a route might be a really good way to kind of guide people to a specific destination. And Colleen, feel free if you'd like, um, we can just have a 15, 30 minute call this week or next week, and we can kind of talk about some ideas if you're if you're feeling like you want to bounce some ideas off of us. What other questions can we answer? Okay, that's excellent. I've got a couple of people I can partner you with then, Katie. And in fact, um, Elaine, who has been commenting in chat with some really great information, is probably the person that I will connect you to in addition to our partners over at Commuting Solutions. Thank you, Marissa. Wonderful. Well, keep the questions coming or comments. Um, I think this is really helpful to see, as Will said, so much activity in the chat and just seeing people share ideas. So um, definitely keep uh, keep chatting. And if after this call, you end up with any questions like we all you know, mentioned throughout this presentation, do get in touch with us at btwd um, at drcog.org, or you can email us at waytogo at drcog.org. We monitor both of those inboxes daily. Thank you, Brittany. All right, well, I won't belabor things. Um, 
as I mentioned, lots of opportunities for you to come to us with questions. Oh, I see we've got one more. Um, so Devin, we typically don't do branded merchandise for the winter Bike to Work Day event. Um, it's just a you know, sort of a lower budget um, event for us. So we don't do all of the things that we do for the June event, but I will say we are finalizing our design for the June Bike to Work Day event. It is very cool, um, really nice. So we'll be uh, launching merch for that. I know historically we have done Winter Bike to Work Day merchandise in the past. It's definitely something that we could explore. Um, every so often we have someone ask us if we're gonna be offering shirts or um, hats. So we can, we can look into that for the future. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, um, we can go ahead, uh, feel free to drop. And if any of you wanna stay online and ask questions in sort of a smaller setting, I will stay here. Um, Brittany and Blair, if you could also stay on for a couple more minutes, why don't we plan to just sign out at 145 if we don't hear um, from any of you. But like I said, do feel free to, to stay on. Elaine's got some suggestions for how we can help our, our participants stay cozy. So we'll definitely keep that in mind. Um, Will, we are not planning to do another coordinator meeting. However, I am gonna share this um, link or this recording in our Dropbox space, as well as on the drcog.org site. But I'm glad you mentioned that what we should probably do is just include that link in future campaign monitor emails that go out to registered station organizers um, so that they can just review this if they were able to attend and watch it for the first time if they couldn't. Yeah, Katie, we we have um we had a few way to go scarves. I think maybe like a winter bike to work day scarf might be a cool idea. Definitely something for us to keep in mind for the future. Um, I'm gonna chime in with a quick question. I tried to message Colleen directly in the chat and it's so active that I might've missed her response. Um, does anyone know, or if Colleen is still on the call, um, which group you're working with in Boulder? I think I saw that Colleen dropped. Um, uh, okay, there was something along the Arapaho path and. Um, I've helped coordinate with the city and, and sometimes the path can be problematic because it gets so popular obstructing right of ways and icy things and different dynamics. So I just wanted to have a little uh, moment with Colleen if that would help. But if if there's questions, feel free to relay will at boulder.tc.org. I appreciate that. I will probably, if you don't mind, maybe I'll just connect you to Will so that you can just um, not only share your thoughts with her, but so that she has um, another bolder resource to talk to. Cool. Thank you. Very good. Yay, Sue, thank you for registering your party station. Um, and we'll also be in touch. I was assuming that you are asking Boulder stations to register on your website. Is that how um, you're doing it for the winter event? Yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I am asking them, but I'll go back and gather yours and give you mine as we've done in the past. That sounds great. I appreciate that. So Sue, to clarify on that topic, do you expect there's kind of like a Google map specific for Boulder as we had done in prior years, mainly pre-COVID? Yes, my husband does that now. Very Correct. good. Cheers to Glenn. We always owe him a lot after the winter and June events. Excellent. Well, it looks like everybody who is left on the call are people we know pretty well. They know how to reach us. So I am just going to call it and post this recording. Um, thank you all, TMA, so much for joining. It's really helpful to have you here. Um, and other partners really appreciate your support and participation. I'm hoping this will be a great event with an amazing turnout, and we appreciate everybody's support. All right, Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for hosting. I Thanks, look everybody. forward to connecting with you all 
in the coming weeks specific to the Denver Civic Center station. So uh, it's going to be fun. We are happy to talk to you and work with you, Brandon. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye, everybody.